when the Durant came along in July. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget the text message that you sent him because he kept at him and Rich kept asking, is Steph okay? And, and for people who watch this, you gotta understand before like- he signed, he's Before like, he signed, yeah, before yeah, he signed, before he signed. Yeah. I mean, and I, it blew me away. Lead by Example with Bob Myers is presented for the people by Caesars Sportsbook. You bet, you get with Caesars Rewards. Must be 21 or older. Welcome to Lead by Example. I'm your host, Bob Myers. That's, that sounds good. That sounds good, right? <laughs> That's my introduction. It's a big thing. There's all these crazy lights in it now. Steph Curry's the guest. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. I don't think we've had a lot of, we've never done anything like this. Never, no, none of all these this high level productions. We've had some, some good conversations yeah. over the last 10 years, but. Uh, Private yeah. ones. Yeah. What, um, so what, what a toughest, I met you, what was that, your third year? Second mm, year? What was your in first between year? my second and third, yeah. Yeah. What was the, um, I have my answer, but toughest, what's been the toughest part of the Steph Curry journey? Like even be before NBA? Um, that's a good question in terms of, I don't know how you look at it, your life, because uh, I think the beauty and how I see it, it's always trying to be in the moment. And so like every season of life you're in, the highs and lows, yeah. you feel them. You're like, and uh, like you kind of live it hard in terms of, you know, what that experience is like, what lessons you learn, what adversity you go through, how you deal with success, how you deal with failure and all that. So when I look back, it's always hard to kind of rank, sure. you know, the experience is like, what's the hardest? Because even like right now in the present day, you yeah. feel like, yeah, these are hard yeah. like, to me. Yeah. Obviously, the perspective of how blessed we are in life to be doing this as right. a job and all that, and family and um, all the opportunities you have. Like, there are certain challenges that you're facing now that, yeah. to me, are like we really need to solve it. But, um, you know, injuries, uh, the uh, you know season that kind of around when I met you when I was. Uh, going through the ankle problems and stuff where you get a taste of what it's like to play at this level. You understand how much you get fulfilled by it, how much you love the work, uh, the challenges of trying to figure it out, but the injuries keep you off the court so consistently, so frequently, you start to doubt everything that you poured into yeah. Yeah. Um, your craft and like the cloud hanging over, will I even just be healthy enough to um, you know, get my two feet on the floor and even give myself an opportunity to be like the player that I wanted to be. Um, and that was over a two year yeah. kind of stretch yeah. off and on yeah. where um, a lot of dark days and a lot of patience, a lot of support from, you know, family, uh, people that you trust, you know, and can kind of speak positivity and life into you confidence into you um, and gave me a great perspective for what's happened ever since because I know like yeah. you know how fragile the game is how fragile life is in terms of you know nothing's really guaranteed so yeah um, I have a, a immense uh, level of gratitude for everything that's happened since I remember we were sitting there I think you were spraining your ankle just walking yeah I mean it was not <laughs> Which is crazy. It just you never even see that, right? I don't know if I've seen anybody. I don't think I've seen since. before since. Since uh, I've seen people with like you know bad luck where you're yeah. landing on someone's yeah. foot or you know having this a like... injury and all that. The one I remember is in San Antonio. That was the wildest one where I got a rebound or I got an outlet pass and I turned to go run and like it just basically went to go yes. push off of yeah. my right foot. Nobody within. And then, yeah. And then you just look back like what. what I felt like Forrest Gump <laughs> without the uh, without the big braces. Yeah. Um, so it was it was weird. It was just a weird time. How did you? Um, I remember sitting there with you one time. I think we were at the Jackson Center, and you had you couldn't practice, and you had your leg, in, oh, you know, uh, ankle and ice. And I had a thought. I think I said to you. I think I said it. I said this isn't. This is not. We can't do this anymore. Because remember, you were playing. Mm -hmm. And then getting hurt, and then trying to, and because of you, who you are, you kept trying. 
And I remember going, we're, we're done here. Like, this is, do you remember that or not? I don't know. You may that remember was, it in a different way. Well, um, the lockout year, because I had another surgery after that all season, or right. during that all season. But that was uh, kind of the year and a half kind of mark of how long I'd been dealing with. And to your point, there was just rehab every day. There was, it was, it was nothing about basketball. It was just, yeah. you know, just me trying to get on the, yeah. you know, yeah. on the court and be available. Um, and just how frustrating that was. I'm sure not only for me, obviously for you, for coach, for the team, like is he playing, is he not, how long is he going to be out, is yeah. he not, and like trying to find any type of expectation or, uh, or consistency on that front. I remember uh, going on the knife the year before that and then going on the knife the second time, uh, which was crazy because you were part of that process yeah. with my dad, my agent, yeah. and the doctor. Like, there's three different outcomes that could come out yeah. of this. You're going to yeah. go under, and we're going to try to make the right call on whether it's yeah. just a cleanup or whether it's a yeah. reconstruction or whether there's some other intervention we can have. But these are the three options that we have. You're going to go under when you wake up. Yeah. We'll let you know, yeah. you know what it looks yeah. like. Um, that was a really uh, scary, scary uh, experience for sure. But obviously, that's the part of... Um, the blessing of having people around you that you can trust to yeah. know what was going into that kind of decision and all that. And I woke up, um, and it was the least invasive yeah. option that that's, came up, base case scenario, um, which was a relief. But then that was uh, that re re restarted the work that was going to be necessary to get through the recovery process, which was another four to five months, but it was different. I remember sitting at, at uh, Casa Del Mar, same thing, like spot. Yes. Post post surgery, and I I think I said to you, I said if we if you get out of this, um, which I, I think we all thought you would, then I, I think I said like, can you work on leading this team? I don't know if you remember that. You probably don't remember much of what I tell you, but because yeah, remember, remember early sound on, sound bites. I remember but just your presence, because like uh, when when we traded uh, Monte and we were in Sacramento, I remember. Uh, and Coach Jackson pulled me in the hallway. He was like, you're getting the keys to the team. I was like, what is that? Like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, he's Always passionate. Wanted. He's yeah, really oh, yeah. Yeah. Comments, but I didn't want ready for the message at yeah. the time. Yeah. And then that was that summer, the kind of yeah. the, same, the same vibe of not only, I mean, obviously, that you need um, people to pour like a vision into you I guess yeah. in terms of like what you're capable of what your full potential yeah. is not just as, and then yeah. not just as a player but yeah. as uh, somebody that can impact the locker room in other different ways impact the organization um, through leadership yeah. through kind of walking into the accountability yeah. what that means um, and thankfully uh, I've heard this saying now when the student is ready the teacher will yeah. appear yeah that was a very you know, inflection, or a strong inflection point in my life because you know you realize uh, what it, it you have to be yourself yeah. first and foremost whatever your personality is you, know, you were saying yeah. that you weren't trying to change like who I am yeah. how I approach things but to realize uh, the opportunity that I had to not just be a great basketball player but to you know again I guess walk into a role of leadership that wasn't going to be easy, um, yeah. but demanded another level of awareness and yeah. commitment, yeah. Uh, consistency, and kind of wisdom, I guess, in terms of like what does that actually mean, yeah. and figuring it out for myself. It's crazy. You might be the one NBA player that the coach says it's, it's your team now. I'm handing you the keys, and you go. <laughs> <laughs> Most NBA players, give me that. Give me, give me those so keys. I should have had those a year ago. <laughs> you're you're you're, you're kind of like I guess, coach. I mean, that's what you need me to do. He was good though, Mark. I, I know he. You credit him, I credit him. But what did it feel like for him? Because I, I always tell people one of my favorite parts of who you are is your confidence. Yeah. Kind of unwavering, not not showy, but real, pure, legit confidence in your ability. I think that's so hard for people, no matter how successful they are, to actually have that deep in there. Like I believe in myself, in the midst of a lot. But then he comes along and takes it to another level with you and publicly compliments you in a pretty big way. And, and I'm sure privately did it while he was coaching you. What did that do, or how did you feel that? How did you process that? The stuff he was saying about you and... So there's a, 
I'm gonna try to explain it how I how I think and how I felt. It scared the hell out of me at first. Really? Because I do have like a. I, I guess I've been I call it myself a healthy insecurity of. Um, you said I have confidence, and I do. And that's built off like my work ethic and right. the way I approach the game, life, and all that. You have to deserve that confidence, but I have a healthy insecurity of like understanding, like when he says me and Clay are the best shooting backcourt in the league, like I would never say that myself. Right. But I believe it. Sure. But then you're like, all right, cool. Now, how, what are you going to do about it? Like going forward, right. how are you going to prove right. that to be true? And like that insecurity is like what's, you know, and that what's coming next. Yeah. I never feel uh, settled in that. Sure. Um, uh, expectation right. or whatever, right. the title or the, the, the you know, the banner they put up, yeah. or the headline, or whatever it is. Um, it's a weird kind of dichotomy because when I'm out there in the court, I feel like I can do anything. And yeah. I have like this irrational confidence yeah. of right. shots I take. Can't tell. Passes. <laughs> <laughs> the one handed uh, turnovers, and I look up yeah. and you and my mom. Yeah, right. it was great. Uh, shot, you know, shots you take, the way that you play, and all that. Like, I, you get lost in it, and that's the confidence I have. But then, you know, I never kind of drink my, you know, get the Kool Aid enough to know. Like that just is gonna continue to happen on its own right. forward, and you have to kind of continue to prove and double down on that every single day, and that's where the healthy insecurity where, comes. Where, out where is that? Where, where? So you see the healthy insecurity? Is it? Where is that? I've never seen that really. Like you don't uh, show that much. That's in the work that I put in, though. Um, that I, even like you know, case in point, last year we won the finals. Finals MVP, all that type of stuff. Celebrated, had an amazing night, parade, all that. Three days later, I was really thinking about, you know, right. when does the work start for next yeah. year? Because um, I was extremely proud of myself and proud of our team yeah. and proud of everything we accomplished. Um, but then you're looking like, it's kind of, it was like the imposter syndrome almost. Yeah. Like, all right, what's, yeah, what's going to happen next? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, that, I couldn't. I started thinking about Yeah, my really this next. guy. Is that coming from you or coming from what's around you? No, that's coming from me. That's, that's, that's you. A, like, it's, it's not me. because now I got to live up to something more because of the expectations of people around me. That's your own thing. Yeah. And it might be kind of born through, like, just that underdog kind of mentality. Yeah, because um, you grew up. Yeah, and like nothing was ever, I, I knew how to bless life, like my parents yeah, sure. played in the league. Like but to, you weren't the number one right. guy. In basketball, everything I had was, was, was earned, and I was a late bloomer, and Davidson and all that. So that underdog mentality is, is always part of the DNA, no matter how much success you have. You, it's, it's hard to articulate it, because yeah. you look at you know, you're all the champs and all the accomplishments and all that. But if you look at it from where you began, it makes sense. Not now. Right? Yeah. Maybe not it's now. There's a whole continuous yeah. arc, right. and yeah. I've always maintained that. So that's where, um, I guess, the the drive comes from once, the, the gratitude comes from, and then also realizing like the amount of people that it takes to do what we do, mm -hmm. you know, at the highest yeah. level. Like there's, yeah. a pre there's awareness yeah. and appreciation of yeah. that too. Um, no matter no matter how big the spotlight gets. I asked you, I don't know, it was a few months ago or a year ago. I said, why don't you? Because I would know. Why don't you blame people more? Like why don't you? And you told me why. Because your mom said something to you. I mean, it's crazy. You remembered. This is why I don't blame. This is where this is a story I remember that it's my response or it's my that ain't gonna get me anywhere. Yeah, it's not gonna get you anywhere. Um, the first it sounds so cliche, but obviously you look at yourself and like when something goes wrong, it's like what can you fix first yourself? But that, I don't think that's obvious. I mean you think to that's me, it, to yeah. you, but why where did that so you said you must have been what a certain age and we're like, it's not my fault. And somebody was like, No, no. You gotta look there first, you know. I don't think that's automatic. It might be to you. Yeah, you can kind of hold people accountable around you, and there's like tough conversations you got to have. There's, um, you know, kind of pushing people along. Then your first immediate thought has to be like, am I doing everything in my power sure. to control the situation, to bring your best, you know, effort, and and not make it so much, you know, about the results. Do you remember where you were when your mom said that to you? 
or was it not that vivid? It's not that mind? vivid. It was. It's just a constant reminder of the the standard of just accountability to yourself. Like she, she, uh, my in middle school I was in eighth grade. She uh, helped me out in my first middle school game because I didn't do my, the dishes at the house and. I'm over here talking about like the impact it's gonna have on the whole. I'm the best player on yeah, the, on the yeah. middle school team. And I'm like, yeah, I gotta be there. I have to be there. Yeah, yeah. You, you're gonna make. Yeah, you're gonna. You're hurting them. Right. Not, yeah, yeah. Don't and, play. Don't hurt the team. <laughs> <laughs> and she gives me that look, and I know yeah. it's falling on deaf ears. And she's yeah. like, No, you didn't handle your business. So it's your. So you're gonna have to yeah. go. And don't explain put it on to me. Them, yeah. You know it's pretty good. why you're in the situation and all that. And there was like no. There's yeah. no you know, follow-up question. There was yeah. no, she, yeah. I, I, I felt it. That's one kind of story, but it's mostly like the constant reminder for, for me and how she raised us right. um, that you have to control the controllables, and most of that is what you do, and yeah. not being in a situation where you're, you're blaming anybody else or pointing the finger elsewhere, because um, there's probably something that you can do first to help the situation. Um, it's funny, like I don't think many AAU parents now are saying to their kids, like you you can't go to the game, you didn't mow the lawn, you didn't take the trash out, best player, but that's a that'd be hilarious. Where's so and so, the number one recruit? Curry, yeah, gets invited to Curry camp in the summer. He's like, uh, he, his mom calls, he can't come. He, he got to be minus <laughs> math, so I told him. You'd be like, just let him come. Yeah, you know? just give me something. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, I I do I know I kind of just said it, but I do know because it's my job. You've never called me and said, what are we going to do? And everybody thinks the last 12 years, or I've been here for 12 years now, mm -hmm. have been all perfect. And that's not, we know that's not true. Um, I would have expected at one point or another, and not even been upset for you to say, I think one time you might have said, what is the plan? But that's the closest you got to... Whereas a lot of other people would have been way ahead of that deal, is that is it? Were you more? Are you more patient because you had already had success, or is that just you? Because if there's a difference, or do you have well, trust? Or, I don't know what. Yeah, because you're not a good trust, GM, by the way. Anyway, no, we've had, we've we can <laughs> we can talk about that too. Yeah. I I know I know. <laughs> Uh, the value that everybody brings to the organization, uh, and me needing to do my job um, in that front. I'm kidding. Yeah, you're pretty good. No, you're really, fine. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, being trusting one, and those are built on like obviously you know the reps of you know relationships and conversations and um, actions and all that that you build trust with people that, case in point, you coach um, mm -hmm. and your teammates. Yeah of it takes a lot for you to have to hit the panic button yeah. you know because you, you mean or yeah, yeah you not, not a lot you know of people know that not, this isn't something that just is yeah you know, an overnight right you know change yeah. in what's the situation like i'm pretty yeah understanding of that and patient on that front um but i feel like you know you could talk about the success that's happened that maybe has you know built a, a level of uh, it's helped that patience yeah. you know kind of take root because you know you've tasted success you know um, what that's been like and there's another level of con confidence that you can get back there but it, even when we were going through the coaching change back and you know we had some yeah. tough conversations yeah. around it yep. we were on kind of on different sides yeah. And, like the trust part was, you know, hopefully we can get you. You got to get this right, yeah. And kind of, yeah. you know, letting the dust settle where it was, and understanding that I'm not. It's not my place to yeah. run the team. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Sign up yeah. Players, coach the team. Yeah. Do yeah. all that. Um, but it feels like now more than people are making that a star's place. If the star wants it, but. Yeah. I, I, I also feel like, you know, that's not been a recipe for success um, right. historically. So yeah. it's just a matter of um, you know, always keeping a big picture mentality of where you're going. And I was, we've been blessed because, you know, it has worked. Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time that's why we're all still yeah. here. Probably mostly because of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're all still yeah, here. Yeah, mostly you. But it's also, um, I feel like if I do 
you know, if I, that call does come, you would receive it in a different yeah, way yeah. because yeah. Um, I would almost our, make the trust that we've built. So well, if it, yeah, it depends on the timing of that call. Like, was it five years in, three years in? If it came, <clears throat> I mean, I think even now, if anybody got to, lucky enough to walk into a job where you were there, I think anybody um, in my position would feel a responsibility to give you every chance to succeed, right? That, that, that's, that's the pressure I feel. That's built on like your daily experience yeah. with me, yeah. with, you know what yeah. I mean? That's not like something yeah. where I acted a certain way. No, 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 way no, no, for, no, no, no. No, I'm just saying like you can say that because of the cult, like the uh, cult type of word, culture that we have yeah. and all that and that we've built. But uh, I trust you because we've had conversations yeah. where, you know, right, wrong, right. Um, you know, whatever the, the, the decision that comes out of that, you know, I've usually rock with and, you know, trusted that it was going to work and usually it has. So yeah. it's, like, uh, it's the experience and also the results that kind of you have to make sure you're balancing because yeah. um, you can't be all the way just results based like, oh, you've gotten yeah. every decision yeah. right. Yeah, right? No, no. I've hated every conversation. Yeah. yeah. Or vice yeah, versa. Yeah. There's a balance of it both, right. but that's built over time and built over years and reps and the commitment to what we're yeah. doing. So I feel like that is part of what we're trying to explain yeah. in terms of you know why yeah. um, the, why the success has happened for so and long. And you're, you're the just so we're, you're the you know you're the exception to that rule. Like a lot of people have had my they don't get you, whereas you could probably work if any GM in any sport watches this. They're kind of like who wouldn't love to work with this? Like that's more you. Any GM is probably gonna probably do whatever you want, or or be nice to you, or talk to you, or mm -hmm. fill you in. But your ability to hear it and say respectfully, always, okay, this is what I think, but hey, you know, it's not whatever you think. I'm I'm okay. Just explain it to me. That's a rare thing for someone like you. Have you been betting with the Caesar Sportsbook and Casino app? If so, keep it up because every bet earns with Caesar's rewards. That means win or lose, you're getting closer to amazing perks like game tickets, free stays, bonuses, and more. And if not, well, when you get started, your first bet is on Caesars. Register with promo code Omaha Full and place your first bet up to $1,250. If you win, congrats. If you don't, you'll get your stake back as a free bet. When we were, when the Durant came along in July, mm -hmm. I'll never forget the text message that you sent him because he kept at, him and Rich kept asking, is Steph okay? And, and for people who watch this, you gotta understand. Before like, he signed, he's on Before he signed, yeah, 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 before he yeah, signed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And I, it blew me away even. And, and because not uncommon for a star to feel like this is, I'm not sharing this with, another star not not a crazy and not judgmental like yeah. if the star is like look this guy's at my level and some say more some say less but he's at my level this is my like he's gonna take away from me mm -hmm. which a lot of people players may or may not say or they certainly say privately i've heard hey no no that's too much you went you went way the other way because even talking to him and when after july 1st and we were talking to him and he was trying to decide and rich they kept asking me that one question. What does Steph think? What is Steph? Because mm -hmm. you know, Draymond was Draymond's a different recruiter. Yeah, <laughs> You're a more subtle guy. And so you weren't hitting him all the time, but you sent that one message and somebody sent it to me and I could not believe the uh, authenticity of it and the words you chose to use. Even me, knowing who you were, I was kind of like, wow, that, that is, do you remember that? I do. Um... Everything you just explained worked because I know myself, right? I know how I could operate in that environment with somebody as great of a basketball player, <clears throat> great of a basketball player he is, all the off-court, you know, platform and yeah. selling shoes and all yeah. the other stuff. Like, that all mattered. But I also know myself to know, like, I can exist in a situation where um, I know when to get out the way, I know when to lead, I know when to speak, I know, you know, how to find value in myself every single day and nobody was really going to threaten that part it was just like is this going to help us win and am I going to enjoy yeah. playing basketball with him hell yeah. yeah so like yeah trying to explain all that to him and in that and for him to trust that 100% because he didn't know you didn't you weren't we played together yeah, on not. team USA stuff and you know um 
play against Justin A and all that, but never spent time where you know. Yeah. I, when I sent it, I I sent it as I hope to your point. Yeah, I hope he uh, you know believes it and know, knows it's yeah. coming from an honest standpoint. And he could check with anybody around us, or like you know, is he really like that? Yeah. And, you know, they would give him you know give me that standpoint yeah. of validation and all that, but. I, it always comes out, like, and even like to your point, even if you know yourself and you know you can't exist there, that's not the wrong answer. It's just, no, no, that's my point. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you had to check, I don't know if you even had to, but a lot of people would sit for a moment and say, am I really okay with like, yeah. it? I don't know if it was on it, if you're just like, yep, you know, or you, no, I had to, say, yeah, you had to sit there and go, okay. The message, uh, the line I remember was, whether you're MVP or I'm v MVP, if, if it's yours, I'll be sitting there in the front row Cheer, like for congratulating you, and I was kind. Of, I had this moment like, wow, that could actually happen. Like Kevin could have been MVP. Oh, he was Finals MVP. Yeah, no, he was <laughs> we, we all know he was Finals MVP. Uh, he earned that. I, mean, I don't know how did you feel it. like really, really like now that you bring it up, like you got one now. Now you can be honest about it. Was that hard? I mean, I don't know. Like, now, was that what was checking that box really for you? Did it? Because because you can't unhear what all it, it was, was shocking to me. Like all the it, everybody, th it I, felt amazing only because I knew I didn't have to hear. About yeah, it right. But like, very, how powerful is that? It was it was amazing. It wasn't amazing because it was amazing. It was amazing because <laughs> shut the hell up, leave me alone. Like that is not how it should be, right? hundred. Like, it I, shouldn't be because of that. It was about us winning again first, and that's yeah, why I was sure. crying. Yeah, and, no, yeah, that's why yeah. I was crying on the court yeah. and all that and the whole deal. But then getting that trophy. At the end, it was literally just so I didn't have. I, yeah, knew, I, I stood up on the stage that I know for the rest of my yes. life. The rest of my life, Check I'll that. never yeah, have to yeah, hear yeah, that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Finals, you know. But it's hard, man. Because I didn't feel when when you when we won with Kev, I didn't feel. I'm sure as a competitor, you yeah, you'd love to get Finals. I didn't feel you feeling less because of that. I didn't see that. I didn't see any of that. There was one game, uh, 2018, game three. Uh, like there was conversations. You go to the media; they're yeah. asking about it. Um, you know, you look at the stat lines and all that. It's like, oh, if they sweep them, like who really is yeah. gonna get it? You know, Katie or Steph yeah. and all that. I've got getting asked that question in yeah. the middle of the finals. So yeah. obviously, as a human being, your yeah. mind starts to think about certain outcomes and all that. And I played like trash in game three. Yeah. <laughs> was it was it on your mind? No, no, it wasn't. It, it, afterwards, after that, you're out of the equation. <laughs> Straight up. Into that in the middle of the game, yeah. I'm like, it's the balance of knowing the standard that I need to play it for us to win. The fact that I shot it horribly, it was kind of all over the place. I made one shot that, like, towards the end of game three, and then Katie makes the big three. We go up 3-0, yeah. and it's like, yeah. We're, yeah. we're good. We're good. But the finals MVP, I knew it was done after you're, that. Yeah, you're like, but it was I, like yeah, part yeah. of the emotional roller coaster ride of like, oh, that would have been cool to have kept that level yeah, of play going because yeah. that might have got there. Yeah, yeah. But it was also we won, and so you're dealing with a little bit of both of that. Yeah. And it's more, I think Andre had his arm shoulder or his arm around my, uh, around me on the way back through the tunnel. Like we just won, and I was down on myself because of how I played. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And everybody took it as a context. Yeah, like, were, oh, he yeah, just kicked yeah, the finals MVP yeah, thing away. Yeah. I was like, yeah, well, I thought about it once or twice, but the real really upset because like, you didn't play well. Yeah, I played yeah, that trash. Yeah. Um, Typically, I'm be a player. We won and you didn't play well and you're upset. <laughs> <laughs> we see that all the time. Exactly. So, uh, but yeah, it's just amazing to know the narratives that come around and the fact that, like, when you're in these positions that we are, they're going to continue to, you know, yeah. I, invent new angles to kind of pick and poke yeah. and prod and all that. But uh, there was not many better feelings than the stage in Boston. Yeah. I was like, oh, I would, like, if I would never have to get asked, asked that question again. And a lot of people I actually thought, like, miss it. <laughs> <laughs> give it back? No, I won't do that. All right, I give it back. <laughs> yeah, what do you got to, what, what's, what's the thing now? What do you got to prove? Like, what is, uh, you didn't win two, what do they yeah, got? Yeah. They got to have something, yeah. right? You got to have something. And that's yeah. the beauty of being around. Like, somebody was talking about uh, LeBron in his 20th year. It's like the fact that all year, no matter how he plays, they can use the it's his 20th year as a positive or a negative in yeah. terms of like yeah. how you critique his game. Yeah. Like anything he does yeah. great, it's like, oh my God, he's in yeah. year 20. Yeah, like, right. what is he doing? Yeah. Yeah. Or if he plays like Trez, like, yeah. hey, he's in his 20th, 20th year. Yeah. Like, what do you expect? You get that, though. <laughs> you play 20 years. You play 20 so the longer years. we're in this thing, yeah. like, you got to yeah, just, gotta, yeah. you kind of have to have a sense of humor about yeah. all the things that are said about you and then and just the, uh, 
the stuff that comes with this job. It's just, it is fun. Though. Yeah, I hope. I mean, it's not fun for you. I remember when we had kept, when we first when he came, it was halftime of a preseason game. After the game, he goes, "I see, I know now." And I said, uh, "What?" He goes, "It was a preseason game, and Steph had taken two shots like in the first half." He looked at the box score, and I looked over at him to see, because this was early with you guys. Mm -hmm. Was he pissed? Just not, not just kind of checking your body language. You know, when you guys in the locker room have to, you can see who's upset. And he goes, "He acted like he shot the ball 20 times." And I was kind of like, didn't you know that that's what he would? And, and it wasn't like Kevin had, he wasn't judging it. He was just like, wow, you know, yes. he is the teammate I thought he might be. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. That, that I, cause, cause a lot of people go, oh, Steph really is. And I say, yeah, that's, but, but you can see why people are skeptical. Oh, for you sure. Know? I still, I mean, I still, I still hear that as a compliment. Sure. A lot. Yeah. You know, the people who know me or been around and all that, and they validate like, oh, he's even he's a great basketball player. He's an yeah. even better person. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Um, no, I appreciate that feedback. It's still weird that, you know, I guess that is the exception in terms of, you know, just how you balance, you know, success and, you know, this, this journey we've been on and all that. Um, but a part of that, too, is like you said, you see a lot about people just in, the highs, the lows, the in-betweens. I think you talked about yesterday what we're going through now as a team, like some of the young guys. Right. You see how they, you know, respond to, you know, certain challenges and, you know, failures and, and room for, for growth and all that. And you see the behind the scenes guys getting extra shots up after games. You yeah. see yeah. some guys that takes them a while to kind of get out of their own way. Right. You see all you see a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um that's just people, man. Like yeah. any and, and, and that's part of, you know, the ability to, I guess, you know, share who you are, share, you know, that impact with them, share yeah. a certain perspective, a way of looking at life, looking yeah. at things that can hopefully help yeah. you. Whether that's, in, you know, intentional or just kind of, you know, by being in the vicinity. Like, yeah. I, I really appreciate that ability that I've had to um, rub off on a lot of different people. Yeah. And hopefully they take a little bit of that with them. That, that means a lot to me, for sure. Yeah. I would, I mean, from my, there's a good saying I heard where, I think you do this, I don't know what you think. You don't think you're better than anybody, but you also don't think you're worse. Mm -hmm. Which I think is watching you move through whatever, our team outside of it. I see you treat somebody that some would not treat as well the same. And you obviously interact with people that are allegedly more than you. And, uh, and I know you meet, it seems like you meet them at the same level as you would someone else. But I don't think that's common. I actually don't think that's normal. But, but there's a lot we, we talk about. We were, at the, we were, I remember we were at a shoot around in Denver in the playoffs. And I said, can you walk back to the hotel? And you said, I wish I could. I can't. Oh, yes. Right? But that makes you not... I need how, security to walk across this right, little but, hallway but, but right that, <laughs> and you ask, And people wonder why, oh, these guys aren't normal. It's kind of like, well, we can't, he can't walk from f five feet. Yeah. How would you be? What would you be like then? But how do you balance that part? Um, how do you keep that sanity or that's the balance? One, that, uh, that's the one struggle, because I do I almost overexert. Oh, the other, the other way. You give more than you, yeah. you might and that's something have. I've learned um, or I'm still learning over these, you know, last five, six years. <clears throat> Cause I never imagined this would be, you know, my reality in the sense of, you know, you walk down the street and Yeah. People know you, people yeah. wanna, you know, yeah. come up to you, yeah. you feel like you're approachable. Yeah. And yeah. You have to be able to take that energy and do something yeah. with it. And you know, yeah. um, I think the biggest thing is being around my dad when I was growing up. There are a lot of kids that I grew up with who were my friends at school or people I played with and against coming through the ranks. My dad would come to games. He played in the league for 16 yeah. years. People knew him. Um, smaller scale than what I'm, what I'm going through right now, but they come up to him and based on how he interacted with them or if he gave him the time of day or any of his teammates, I remember being in those circles and guys would talk about it. And yeah. be like, oh, he's that uh, asshole, or he, you know, look me like off, the... and I'd hear it, yeah, and I could tell how much it affected him. 
And those little interactions yeah. matter yeah. in the sense of like when if I see a kid or a family, yeah, you or don't, whatever, you just don't want them. Yeah, I have to find that balance yeah. of like, especially when you can't I'm with my, be, you can't be everything can't, for everybody. Yeah. And I know yeah. that, yeah. Um, and it's draining to yeah. even think that you can, and especially when you're with your family. Like my job as a, as a husband and a father yeah. is to you know provide an experience, a normal childhood for my kids, yeah. and. Um, you know, allow us to enjoy each other's company when we're out in public yeah. and not have to worry about all that. Uh, but there's a there's a fine balance to that, and yeah. and it's uh it's an interesting uh, that's, that's, it's learning almost, curve. Yeah. It's a big sacrifice at times, but um, I guess I'm aware of it enough to know how to move. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and how to make sure people. Feel seen in, in the right in the right scenarios, but also protect my sanity yeah. at the same time. What um, <clears throat> when you're done, what do you hope they, what do you hope people say about That's, you? There's this clip uh, I got a, when I was a, I think I was a rookie or second year guy, and you do like one of those um, confessional type cameras, and was, I think it was at one of the All Star games or something. And they asked that same question, mm. and I think I said. Uh, want to be known as somebody who's a true professional, uh, approached the game the right way, um, played hard every night or something, hopefully win a couple championships. And I think that was my line. That's it. Checked a lot of those boxes <laughs> off, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But continuing to live that out, um, get everything out of the game that I can. Um, I did not realize how much of a agent for change I could be off the court um, with, you know, the ability to speak on certain things to, you know, um, partner and, and get to know amazing, you know, leaders and, mm -hmm. and, and, and game changers throughout society that, you know, you can help amplify their stories, um, provide, you know, so many resources and awareness to issues that are near and dear to your heart or, you know, being able to speak for people that can't speak for themselves and uh, being very intentional um, about that. Never re knew the power of that. And so that's something that, um, you know, the, the way that I'm trying to move off the court and, and uh, the entities that I'm setting up to hopefully last, you know, yeah. even longer than, you know, than the ball, the ball is bouncing on the court to, uh, to kind of continue to live that out. Cause there's a lot of good that's come out of me putting that ball in the basket. Yeah. And, um, been, been very appreciative of that. So I don't, do, do, do you ever think <clears throat> that's, if you, if you pull back from all of it and you go, what are you, you're the best in the world at, one thing, like one thing that everybody cares. Do you ever, do you ever sit there and go to bed at night and go, why do they care? Like, all the time. That, yeah. All the time. What do you do with that? Because, because it's a game and, and, but, but there's a lot of people that are, maybe not a lot, but some people are the best in the world at something that nobody, there's a best scientist in the world. <laughs> there's a best, like yeah. you're, but, but the thing you do makes people care at a different level it's a good it's a good point i haven't been able to like answer the question of why like uh my faith has a huge part in that in um answering like that perspective for me because like the sense of gratitude that i have every time i walk off the court yeah and you do stuff that's even beyond your wildest yeah. imaginations or beyond your yeah. wildest expectations of what you can do on the court there's like that moment that you just sit there and I look up and I'm like, yeah. wow. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. It sounds so freaking corny, but it's literally like, no. yeah. why me? And yeah. that doubles yeah. down into what you do next. Well, it's gratitude too. I mean, it is gratitude. <clears throat> like, 100%, I get to do this. 100%. And it's, you know, just the ability um, to understand, like you said, people care. Like, um, a lot. And they care a lot. And you talk about... Uh, one of my my good friends he mentioned like the start of every NBA season, like whatever city it's in or you know professional sports in general, the start of every season like a city has hope. Yeah, 
right? Yeah. They have hope. They yeah. Have, you know, inspiration to be on, like, what's the story yeah. of this team that they're yeah. going to be rooting for? Whether they get to come to games, whether yeah. they watch it on TV yeah. casually, yeah. Like yeah. diehards, there's hope of yeah. this could be our year. Yeah. And maybe that hope takes them into whatever – uh, you know their families, yeah. their jobs, yeah. their communities, yeah. whatever they carry yeah. that spirit. Yeah. And maybe it changes a little something yeah. about you know yeah. their experience, their reality. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Like, yeah, yeah. To what yeah. degree? Yeah. When he said that, I was like, Yo, that's crazy because we get nineteen thousand people to come to our stand. Yeah. We got millions and millions yeah. of people to watch our games. And you're right. Like yeah. that's why we exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm living in that. Yeah. And it's wild to think it's about. Crazy, right? Um, doesn't mean like our days are easy. Yeah, or, no. You know, the no. challenges that we go yeah. through are are fun, but um, it gave community. me a big picture yeah. of like this. That's why it matters. Yeah. What's your definition of a successful journey? Family, friends, professionally. Like, what would you? What are you trying to do? Um. What's a definition? Oh, I'd say. Because I have the, a definition, but but. I don't know what, I want to know what yours is. I'll tell you what mine is when, it, it probably is the same, but maybe say it differently, I don't know. It's, it's the ability to create um, something that's, I guess, bigger than yourself in the sense of kind of what I was just talking about, but also um, to be as present as possible for the people in your lives. So like, yeah. you know, I'm not, we, we have, crazy demands on our schedule and like I'd love to be yeah um everywhere with my kids and my wife every single part you know part of the day but that's not possible but in terms of like creating um you know with my family with my my team you know friends um just the ability of there's something um you you enjoy the experience of life yeah like, and to everybody that whatever that defines happiness is yeah. different but um that you're all kind of in lockstep on what that means. Yeah. And it, it's not results-based. Like, I feel like I've, I've loved the ability to win championships and have all the amazing you know, successes that we've had on the court. I don't think I'd be any less happy as a person. Mm -hmm. If that the, hadn't. If that yeah. hadn't happened yeah. with the people that I have in my life yeah. in a way. Um, it would have been okay. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, that we never lose that perspective. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, we, we are all blessed just to be able to have people that love you and support yeah. you and, yeah. you know, expect the best out of you, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. Um, those are people that yeah. you want in your life. And it's our job to protect yeah. that at all costs. Yeah, because so. nobody else will. Yeah, yeah same. Th I, I say it in a way of um, for the people that know you the best to love you the most. You said that. I like I like but, that. But that, isn't that because yeah. let's do Curry's 30 for 30. Yeah. And you interview Canada or you know anybody, your friends, family, and they go, well, you know, don't have a great relationship with him anymore. <laughs> or, you know, I don't talk to my dad. You know, yeah. I've talked to him forever. Um, that's although in the same moment you've got 40 million Twitter followers or Instagram. And those aren't. That's not the people that are there. But 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 how? I think you know that. But I think that's a hard thing for people. To have millions of acquaintances, mm -hmm. but when you can't play anymore, not you, because you'll you'll be regarded probably forever. But when it all goes away, like who's there? And did you treat those people? Do they even want to be there? Um, you know, that I'm actually I'm actually excited about that frame, time frame in my life because you also know like the sacrifice that have gone into you keeping. Maintain oh, your those work. relationships, yeah, but we're yeah. work perfect. Yeah. Like that window yeah. of you know these yeah. last fourteen years. Um, there's a lot of sacrifices that come with that too on the personal side. Yeah. Um, but to your point, like you have your unit, you you can double down on those relationships. Yeah. And not saying you're making up for lost time, but you know, um, and when, when basketball's not around and whatever comes next in the next chapter yeah. of life, I only really excited about what that looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, for my immediate family, you know, for the people that uh, have been by my side since day one, the people that I've met along the way mm -hmm. that we have, you know, we're value aligned and, and there's there's a two-way kind of relationship there. Like, mm -hmm. I'm so excited about yeah. what that part of it yeah. looks like because you also understand the obsession of being a great basketball player requires Bars, a lot. Yeah, yeah. It requires a lot on a day. And there's a lot of things that you, you do miss yeah. out yeah. on, you know, along the way. Yeah. Um, 
and that's part of the sacrifice, yeah. but it's also, for me, uh, something I'm really looking yeah. forward to down the road to know, um, you know how much those personal relationships matter and that you can grow yeah. for a lifetime over. Yeah, because the, the obsession has to be, to do what you do, you have to be obsessed. And hopefully it's a fun obsession. Absolutely. But you can't be so obsessed that when it's over, there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. And so you have to figure that out. As, a, as somebody like you, where you go, I can't let this plant, I can't not water this plant at home because I can't let it dry up, you know, because I can't be done and go, here's some, pour some water and try to drench the thing, it's dead, it's, like, it's over. But that's, um, that's gotta be a challenge to kind of figure that out, mm -hmm. you know, so. It doesn't get any easier, but it's, it's worthwhile. What do you, uh, the family, this is the last question, what do you hope I mean, I know you care about your wife, your children, like that part of your life. Like, what do you, if you could hope something for the kids to learn from you, from what you've done? Because they're going to hear about, you're a little different. They're going to hear about other people's ideas about you. Mm -hmm. But they're, nothing's going to be more powerful than their, their idea of you. What do you hope that you have given them, just like you said, your mom and dad, what they gave you? What do you hope to show them, say to them? Just this vision that, uh, and the belief, not the vision for themselves and inspiration for themselves, but a belief that they're enough, like as who they are, who they've been created and made to be. Um, as a, <clears throat> as you grow older, you realize uh, even your parents don't always have it all the way together. Yeah. They're doing everything they can to create that you know environment for you. Um, and our job as parents is to hopefully instill that in our kids that you know they are enough, they are perfect the way they are, and we have um, you know just this belief that they can f and, and hope that they can find something that they're as passionate yeah. about as, as I have yeah. been about about basketball, um, and that they know that we're going to be there to support them every single step of the way, yeah. and there's no pressures or expectations on in them being anything other than who they are. Yeah. Um, because I, I am a little fearful about you know this generation, this world in terms of like how we grew up, and right. um, you could you could protect that a little bit easier than than today yeah. because of the noise yeah. and distractions that they have. Yeah. It's tough to uh, to keep hold of that. So um, I just want them to yeah to to find peace in, in who they are yeah. because you know that's part of the narratives that we were talking about. Everybody's gonna be kind of, you know, point out who, who you're yeah, not and yeah. what you're not what you're and all that. To be. And I know that's going to be tough based on yeah, the comparisons you, and yeah. the shadow that I've, yeah. you know, me and Aisha yeah. cast on that. So um, that's the goal. That's the mission. That's what I've uh, I long for them because I know there'll be challenges for yeah. sure. Um, but I can already see in the 10, 7, and 4 right now, they're all, you know, have yeah. such unique personalities yeah. and a zest for life. I want them to hold on to that. Yeah. Good luck, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.